Good morning and welcome to Holy Comforter's Children's Worship on this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. This morning's story comes out of the book of Matthew and it's called The Wedding Party. Jesus told many stories about God's shalom. Each story helps us to understand a little more of what Jesus meant. In this story, Jesus says that God's shalom is a little like a big party after a wedding. But if you want to come to the party, you have to get ready now. Abigail and Isaac had decided to get married. They loved each other very much. We want everyone in our village to come to our wedding. It's going to be a really big party. We don't have enough money to buy food for everyone at the party, but if each person brings a little food, there will be enough. When is your wedding going to be, the people of the village asked. We don't know exactly, said Abigail. Isaac and I have to go to another village because of our work. When we both get back home, we'll have the wedding. So get ready now. Some of the people in the village began to get food ready right away. We want to have it all prepared so that as soon as Abigail and Isaac come home, we can have the wedding. But some of the people, other people in the village didn't get ready. There's a lot of time for that, they said. Then one day they heard someone running down the street yelling, Abigail and Isaac are coming. Grab your food and come. Let's start the wedding party. All those people who had their food ready ran to the wedding party. They began to sing and dance and to share all of the great food. The people who didn't get any food ready ran to their houses. We have to cook something fast. Hurry! Finally, they had their food cooked. They put their food into baskets and began to run to the wedding. We hope we're not too late, they said. Coming down the street, they saw the people who had gone to the wedding. The party is all over, they said. You missed Abigail and Isaac's wedding because you weren't ready. Too bad. The party was such fun. So what did you hear in the story that stood out to you? Maybe something you've never heard before or something extra special that just stood out. Why is it important to always be prepared? And what can we do to be prepared for when Jesus comes again? I want you to think about those questions. And now it's time for our creed. Our creed is our statement of belief, the things that we believe about God. We believe in God the Father, the creator of all things. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died for our sins. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who gives us our gifts to use for the body of Christ. Now it's time for our prayers to the people. Our response for each prayer is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the churches of the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people who lead our country and state. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our church. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace on earth and for people who have nothing to eat or drink. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the brave, alert, and strong military that they show mercy in carrying out their service. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, friends, and everyone around the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for anyone who has died and their families who might be upset. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our church to do what God asks us to do by helping our community and neighbors. Lord, hear our prayer. Now it's time for our five-finger prayer. We use all five fingers to pray, and we start at our thumb. At our thumb, let's pray for those closest to you, your family. Let's take a moment and think about the people in your family that you would like to pray for, and let's pray for them now. Our second finger is our pointer finger. Let's pray for those that point you in the right direction. Our teachers, doctors, and priests, let's ask for wisdom and support. Let's take a moment and think about our teachers, doctors, and priests, and let's ask God to give them wisdom and support. Our 
fourth finger is our third finger is our index finger. It's the tallest finger. Let's pray for those that lead us, the people in government. Let's ask God to give them guidance and wisdom. Let's take a few moments and think about the people in our government that lead our communities, our president, governors, mayors, city managers, anyone who makes decisions in our communities, and let's pray for them now. Our fourth finger is our ring finger. It's the weakest finger. Let's pray for those that are weak, in trouble, or in pain. We cannot pray too much for them. Let's take a moment and think about the people who might need extra prayer this week. Those that are sick, those that are alone, those that are homeless, anyone who might need extra prayer this week, and let's pray for them now. And our last finger is our pinky finger. It's the smallest finger, so let's pray for ourselves and our own needs. So take a moment and think about the things you need prayer for yourself this week, and let's pray for that now. And let's end in a prayer together. Holy God, we thank you so much for your stories. We thank you for teaching us about God's shalom. We ask that you be with us this week. Help us to shine our Christ light brightly to the people around us. We ask that you help us to be kind and generous and loving to the people around us, even if they are not kind and generous and loving to us. We just thank you so much for our church family. We thank you for ways to meet, even though we are apart. We ask that you bring us back safely next week. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you again next week. Bye.